Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we have unboxed the T72 tank. This time, I will show you the process I have done to paint this tank. So I will be turning this into this. In this video, I will be using different techniques including shading, modulation, and chipping. I am new to this hobby and this video is not really going to be a tutorial but more of documenting my process to compare later on and hopefully see if I am making some improvements. Tips and constructive criticism are always welcome. As the model is already pre-painted, I figured I will use this as the base color and just build up on it. So first we start off by airbrushing some shadows. These are mostly applied to deeper areas and areas where there are joints. This will make the tank look not too flat. Next, I use a lighter color for the airbrush to simulate highlights. This will give a good contrast to the shadows earlier. Next is we put in the final color. This is the lighter shade of the olive green that I used earlier. I try to apply light shades and go heavy on the highlighted areas. You can still see the shadows that we painted earlier. We just try to go over the whole model including the turret and the gun barrel. Next, I put in a wash for the road wheels and sprockets. This gives a worn effect on them. I did the same thing on the tracks but with a rust color. Although not that realistic but this will have to do for now. Next, I tried to put in some chipping for the road wheels by using a light color. So this basically simulates chipping the paint as tanks mostly traverse harsh terrains and the wheels do take a beating. Next, in the face of the wheels, we tried to put in some more chipping. We can either use a regular brush or a sponge to create random patterns of chipping. I did the same thing to the tracks just to simulate a bit of wear and light dirt as well. Next, we put in the same color in the guide teeth of the tracks because this area gets rubbed and there would be some wear on them. Next, we put in some chipping for the hull. Based on reference photos, these are mostly storage containers made of aluminum. So I'm using a light color to show the chipping and simulate the aluminum base showing through. Chipping is mostly applied to corners and elevated areas where they are most likely to get scratched and scraped. Thank you. 
The same goes on the other side of the tank, which are the fuel tanks. These are made of aluminum as well. The storage attached to the turret are also made of aluminum, so we use the same chipping color. Next, we use a dark chipping color on areas that are made of steel, trying to simulate the steel being exposed. I learned that you can get carried away with a lot of chipping, but putting them in the right places would give a good balance to the look of the tank, unless you're really going for that weathered look. So in the upper glazes plate, we tried to put a bit more chipping, especially on the corners. And after all of that is done, this is now the result. I put back the unditching log and attached in a tarp to the snorkel as an accessory to give the tank a bit more detail. I also put in the mounts at the back of the external fuel drums without the drums themselves. I got this idea from reference photos and videos. This made the rear of the tank look more aggressive. Overall. This looks a lot better from before and the tank now has a subtle worn effect. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video and I have learned a lot in doing this process. There's a lot more to learn and experience and I hope to share that with you. If you like the content so far, please consider to like this video and subscribe. And I will catch you next time in my next video.